What is up? It's your boy Johnny Shreve. I have BB Promos to tell like it is, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Coaching Up. Before you get started, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button. A lot of you guys are watching videos but not subscribed, so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Also, put that post notifications on. So, next time I put a video, you are the first ones to see it. Anyway, we're going to coach up Keon Pearson and Martin Fitzwater over at Metroflex Training Legs. Obviously, you guys, if you guys do not know what Metroflex Gym is, that is where Johnny Jackson and Branch Warren train, obviously, and also boy Ronnie Coleman slanging and banging weights in there, guys. But you know what? We obviously know that those guys can do what they do. We've seen them train before. Roll some clips, please. There you can see it. That's not what you do because if you train like that, you will 100% get injured. And you'll say, man, how come those guys didn't get injured? Anyway, um, let's just watch what we got in here right now. Let's see where they're training. Right now, they're training legs. Let's see if we can coach them up and let's go this is how we train we go balls to the wall all out every day every time we go to the gym all right so he got like a uh, little um you know voice over of johnny jackson they were training and they went train they, they used to train ball i used to watch those guys all the time I, and you, i literally we all made mistakes and copied them we all made mistakes we're like yeah man i'm train like ronnie and johnny jackson and branch warren and you slang weights around and then you're like ah I'm injured. My back. Oh, my back. You know what I mean? So you can't do what they do, but I'm going to help you guys out here. Make sure we're, we're hitting legs the right way. Anyway, and let's just see if these guys are actually going to give us some, some quality, you know, um, you know, training clips we can get there for, you know, form whatnot, or are we just going to, okay, we're going to get that. All right, let's, here we go. Nobody trains super heavy anymore. That's how we learn. That's all we do. And, uh, you look at all the great champions of the past. They all train with high intensity and they train heavy. All right, here we go. Our first set here will be 100 reps. Okay, first they got 100 reps. All right, I knew, I, I had a feeling that's what would happen. Um, here's the thing, man, and, and everyone falls victim to this. Most people do. But when they go to Metroflex gym, they think they got to train like Johnny and Ronnie and Branch. And they don't, and they can't, and they're not those guys. And then it just looks like you're just really trying to be them. Instead of just taking the actual basic fundamentals you know and just train hard. There is, there is, you can train hard without doing that. Actually, I find guys that can control the weight more. I'm talking guys like, you know, like Ian and um, Nick Walker, um, James Hollingshead, you know, guys like, you know, Fuad, guys who can, Fuad too, guys who can control a huge load for a lot of reps. To me, is way more impressive than this doing this. Now, 100 reps, and, you know, if you guys are watching this, like, we're going to watch a little bit, all right? Ah, ah, boom, 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 form. Like, no time and attention, right? At all. And there is, there's no rhyme or reason for this at all. Like, it literally, it's like, oh, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to act like those guys. And it just looks ridiculous. I'm just being honest. I'm telling you like it fucking is. I'm telling you like it is. Don't do that. I'm going to get my, I'm going to get my guy, I'm going to get my editor roll clip. Do your leg extensions like this. Okay, so we're doing leg extensions. I want you to think of really planting yourself into the bench. I'm going to repeat this over and over and over again. These handles here are for you to help with giving leverage. It's almost like you're trying to do this in a sense, trying to pull yourself into the bench more. So when we're sitting on the bench, number one, we want our butt to be at the back of this. So make sure that you have the seat up high enough. Now, where should it be in relation to the back of your leg? So most people have it too far back. Now this machine is really sweet because this is a hoist rocket line, so it moves with you. So it gives you the actual proper ergonomic movements when you're actually going through this. So, but even though this does move with you, you want to make sure this is not jamming the back of your legs. So have the, the back of the seat up high enough that you have a little bit of hang off here. So you have a good free motion or movement between the uh, knee extension from here and then the flexion going back because you don't want this restricting your movement. Anyway, from then on, we want to be here pulling ourselves into the bench, right? Not so like this, but just playing yourself so your core is engaged. Remember, it doesn't matter what movement we're doing, we're, we want to keep our thoracic spine, our torso, always in this like very stiff athletic position where we're stabilizing from here. This is our base. Everything outside of this is an extension 
of our torso. We're doing, we're basically doing knee extension. We're actually flexing through. So when you're doing this, you're just doing this and flexing your leg. I'm flexing my leg, but I'm not actually hyperextending my knee. This is hyperextending my knee. This is me extending my knee, right? And flexing through my quad. I'm gonna do the same thing underneath here while I'm putting my butt in the back of this bench, holding myself stable here, and then I'm gonna flex through here. And then where we wanna make sure where our feet are in relation to this pad, you wanna be like sitting around here at the top of our, of our foot. Not sitting on our leg, because we don't want our foot to have to do any kind of like, we don't want it to have to work harder, right? We wanna be able to free, freely move our foot so we're either dorsal flex or plantar flex pointing the toes to your shins, pushing the toes away from your shins. So we want to be able to move freely to be able to do this or either this without it sitting on that part there. So again, when we're here, pulling ourselves into the bench, making sure we don't have this kind of, doing this kind of stuff. We don't want our butt to come off the back of the bench. We want to have our butt in the back of the bench, sitting through and then flexing through the quad and squeezing in. As you can see, I'm just squeezing through my quad I'm not trying to hyperextend and pull my leg to the back of my face. So I'm just trying to extend through here and engage in my core, every movement, keep myself playing in the back of the bench. And then add a load to that. If you can do that while adding a lot of weight to that, I'm talking if you want to move up to like 90% of your one rep max and you can still put on that kind of a rep range with that kind of form, then I'm impressed with this. Like at 100 reps, what's is, is there any rhyme or reason to do 100 reps? No, there is not. It's actually better if you did 100 reps in like, you know, four, five, five sets of 20, four sets of 25 makes a little more sense. You can kind of like, you know, keep the time and attention. If you did like a two second negative or like a whatever, one second, negative, whatever it is, just like a one to one, one second negative, one second positive. That's literally what? 50 seconds. It's a 50 second set. More than you need. This is overdoing it. It's kind of like ridiculous. This doesn't. And I'm not trying to take away from these guys. Listen, I'm not trying to hate on these guys at all. I'm not hating on these guys, but I'm telling you what they're doing is completely unnecessary. Just saying. So, like, here's the thing it's like when you do all this, right? And you just completely, and like right now, after this, you don't really need to train your quads anymore you don't because you've literally just taxed them out for just like in the most kind of dumb way to really do it really now you know yeah um, keon here is doing a little better but like look at his butt's coming off like what's he doing he's training abs what's the point of guy being in there to like honestly like it's old school i get it but like yo iron sharpens iron this does not help you guys be like oh what are you talking about me he's yo listen let me tell you something about training number one when you on stage the judges don't give a shit how much you can lift. They aren't asking you how much did you lift this past off season. They're looking at you like, are you lean? Are you peeled? Are you in shape? Cool. Then let's talk. But no, here we don't. All right, now we're gonna go do squats. Now again, guys, let me show you something real quick. If your squat looks like this, I'm not banging on these guys at all. I'll give you an example. If your squat looks like this, it's because of a few things. Number one. Shoulder mobility is gonzo. Guys that have long grip like this, I'm com coming from experience. I do it myself. I had to do it myself. I am now in. It's pretty dope. But if you're doing this, it's because your shoulder mobility is gonzo. Like gone. You don't have any mobility to hold the bar here. So you got to stretch your arm way out here to be able to hold the weight. Right? Now, Keon's got a little bit more. But like, let's, let's look at the rep we're looking at here, guys. Okay, I think this might be a little better angle here, you know, going down, but I'm seeing him folding at the waist from this angle more than I'm seeing any real, you know, hip or knee flexion. I'm not even like seeing it, but I can tell by the way he's moving, there's not much hip or knee flexion going on in that squat. I can promise you that there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like bending at the waist. There's a lot of like, you know, I would say it maybe a little bit of flexion. Uh, hip flexion only because he's, he's lowering his back like that, but not, not because he's actually squatting. All right, this guy's got, after he's doing 100 reps of doing, after doing 100 reps 
we're gonna go and 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 squat four plates, knees wrapped up, legs are definitely taxed. Good for him for for you know for doing this. Good for him. He's got a spotter behind him, spotting the in, entire time. Look, I understand safety and whatnot, and having you know, there's no safety racks that are here, so I get having to have a spotter. But I would say have a spotter there, and then getting in those harder reps. If you need a spotter there the entire time, you probably, I don't know, you just, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't really do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, lower the weight. You know what I'm saying? Lower the weight a bit. Anyway, so Keon's bar is too high, number one. Bar is a little too high. That bar can be back a little bit more, and it's causing him to do this thing here. Right? His spine's already out of alignment because he's got this here. He's got the weight on his neck, like a little bit lower on his trap, and he's doing this kind of thing here. And he's got the weight like this. That is not a good proper form at all from the spine. Let's just watch. I'm going to show you again what we don't want, right? Right? Butt goes back first, right? You want your hips and your knees to go at the same time. They move the same time to lower your body. If your hips go first, then your knees, you're kind of doing a hinge. You're kind of doing more of a hinge, more so than squatting, right? You do want to make sure that you're, you're, you have enough power to be able to Basically, do this with the hips at the top, being this is like your torso and this being here, your waist. But you should be able to do this at the top, but we don't want this, right? And you can see even by his knees, you can see when he's going up, there's not like the get to get more depth and a little more knee flexion because he gets lower. But now we're not getting lower. We're only going to that spot because, you know, he's doing heavy weight. Does he have to do that weight? I don't think so. I, I know so. It's unnecessary. He just had 100 reps. You just had 100 reps. On a leg ascension, 100 reps, no rhyme or reason really to do it. And then let's go load up the squat bar. Most of the point of doing a pre-exhaust is to kind of give yourself, you know, pre-exhaust your muscles so that you don't really have to put that much more of a load. You don't have to load your spine as much. The work still gets done, but you're not overloading your spine for no reason. I, I kind of expected some, like I expected this. I'm not, I'm not judging. I kind of expected like, all right, they're going to be at Metroflex. Let's see how they train. And it's like, we're there. We got to train. Like, we got to train crazy and heavy and hard. And with no form, really. And then just throwing the weights around. You know what I mean? I expected that. So, I mean, like, for it, like, it's good. Hey, listen, you want to get jacked and pumped up to go to the gym and train. It's good to see in a sense. But at the same time, if you're looking at videos before you go to the gym, like I used to, to train, you're looking at videos to not just entertain you and get you jacked, but to see how it's done properly. So when you get there, you're, you know, you're executing the right way and not kind of just copying what your favorite YouTuber or bodybuilder does. Because sometimes, most of the time, doesn't really equate to, you know, to optimal, right? So let's just see what we're doing here. We got, okay, he can hardly walk. We get it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Lock, locked out legs. 10, 11, 12, 13. Right? Like, again, let's just look at optimal spine. When we are doing leg press, when you're doing leg press, make sure you are using the bench, the back of the seat, and the bench, the seat of the seat as your leverage. That is your leverage. Right, get on there, shoulder pressing, get a nice healthy spine, get your sternum up, open your chest up, shoulder pressing, grab the sides of the handles. Better please roll a clip here on how to properly do leg press. Okay, so now we're looking at leg press. This one again, the hoist rock line is gonna kind of move with you. So when you're in this machine, you basically, it kind of moves. So it gives you a really cool extension here. Well, as much as you can get. That helps move ergonomically correct when you're doing leg press. Now, the issue with most people is they think that where your feet are inside and outside are going to, you know, equate to where your quads are um, engaged. Or even like glutes. You're not going to get any glutes on this machine whatsoever because your hips aren't fully um, extending, right? When it comes to you engaging more of your quads, it's more so how much knee flexion you get. So when we're doing this, it's not how wide you are if I'm going to hit you know, hamstrings, yeah, my adductors are working a little bit, but they're not really pulling together like you would be if you were doing a deadlift. 
so when it comes to us engaging more quad, we want to have ourselves move down so we get more knee flexion. Now this machine doesn't give us much knee flexion because we'll kind of stop right here. I want to get a little lower and I'll be getting that much more knee flexion. But here's my knee flexion here and then pushing through. If I want to work a little more hamstring, then step myself up, the less knee flexion I get, the more hamstring, the more low in the hamstring I'm going to get, right? That's where you're going to get the difference of foot placement and then where it activates hamstrings or your quads. So from here, again, when we're pressing, putting yourself into the bench, this part here, torso is strong. And from here, I'm pushing through. Here, and push through. We don't want to be like this part, trying to push through this way. We want to engage your core so we're strong from here, pulling yourself into the bench so our hips don't come off. We don't want our butt to roll and then our back come off the bench a bit and roll at the bottom, at the bottom, at the bottom. We want our butt to stay in the back so we don't have too much of that flexion at the L-spine, right? So we want to keep it strong from here. Again, we're doing that pressing movement. Think about yourself pressing yourself into this, into the back of this bench, instead of pulling the weight off your chest. So from here, grab, and then tight, and squeeze through, and you're squeezing through. You're not trying to just flex your legs and lock out. You can see the difference between locking out and a rep just squeezing through. That's squeezing, that's locking. There's a difference between this and this. And I, and I can still fully flex here, and my quads can still be activated without me having to do this. I can stay here and just flex through and push through, there's hardly any weight on this. And I can still activate straight through. Anyway, so I hope you guys, you know, learn from that. But again, when we're on this, if you do what I do and you can continue to do that while loading the weight and still maintaining that form, go right ahead by all means. But I don't really care what you do, what kind of training plan you're doing or system. If you're not moving correctly or optimally, you're losing out, you're missing the mark and eventually going to get injured. So I'm saying for you guys who are newbies, guys grow circles if you're newbies, right? If you're not newbies and you're just like, you're just back in the gym, you know, like, you know, you took a couple months off or something like that, or your gym's open back up or whatever it is, start off the new year, put form in the front of everything you do when you walk in that gym, put form there. And then you can load on all the crap you want. You can load it right up, load it up, load all the way if you want. I don't care. As long as you don't break your form. If you break your form to get reps just to look cute. Boom. Don't lock your knees out. Number one, do not do that. And the reason why he's doing that is because his legs are so taxed from doing the unnecessary amount of reps. So now the only way to really can hold himself there is to lock his legs out to take the pressure off his legs. That means when he's locking out, he's disengaging his quads. Locking your knee out isn't isn't i mean to get you have to do knee extension i get it but to hyper extend the knee you're now not really flexing the quad anymore but you're just letting the weight kind of sit there while your leg or your muscles take a break do not do that do not do that you'll be the next gym fail again like you know what I mean? boom tap tap look i used to play this game with my clients it's called sex at your parents house keep it quiet i'm dead serious i also i saw a call they're like what do you mean i'm like listen you're gonna let you're gonna touch the bottom of the squat rack or you're going to touch the bar on the, to the stoppers or on this thing, leg press. You're going to stop on the stopper, but you're not going to make a sound. It's got to be quiet, like sex, sex at your parents' house. you got to keep it quiet. I never had sex at my parents' house at all because my parents, my mom's a reverend and stuff, and um, we couldn't really have girls at the house. And if we did, the parents had to be home, doors had to be open, all this stuff. Old school, so I'm, I'm, I'm only saying I only made that name because I'm just saying, look, if you had to do this exact same thing but not let it slam at the bottom how much harder is this way harder way harder like and again when you do that when you when people when you guys catch the weight when it goes on you catch you recoil and bouncing back up you're missing like this much of your rep and you're probably catching half it on the way down so in actuality you're actually losing out on reps you're literally missing out on reps if you did 20, he's doing 100 reps. They did 100 reps on that leg, leg extension, right? How many reps, did full, actual, full, engaged reps did they actually do? I would say half. I would say half for sure. And this, again, you're missing out. You're missing the mark. Slow the rep down. I'm not saying take all the weight off so you can't do any weight. I'm not saying that. 
Don't don't get don't put words in my mouth. I'm saying, if you can maintain good form and control, add, add as much weight as you fucking want. I don't care, but don't do this shit. This is why we gotta like be a, an example. We're on here like, yeah, man, I'm gonna show everybody how hardcore I am by just bounce the weights off the off the bottom of the of the machine. I'm just gonna smash the machine around. And that's that's my way of showing how sweet I am. Or I'm gonna show you guys how effing strong I am by how much I can control this whole stacked freaking machine and i'm gonna keep my form impeccable then you're like wow that's actually dope anybody can come in here and slang and bang weights anybody can move and weight around we are contracting muscle while adding a load understand that it would have been quit already Martin. You, got this shit. you got this number one man like the guy's taxed the guy does not need to do this he's, not, he's literally taxed and of course the the puke of course he's gonna puke puking is not puking is not puking is not your rite of passage to being a super sweet hardcore athlete puking just means you have an excessive amount of lactic acid and it's gone basically in your guts and you're basically just like feeling nauseous equilibrium's kind of off a little bit and you're like blah and you puke if you rest a little longer probably won't puke if you do an active rest while walking around while you're tired, instead of kind of sitting down with your head back, you won't puke. Let's just not watch it puke. Yeah. Feel better? All right, we're going to go back. And so while you're done, when you're puking, go back in there and let's go. This guy is primed to get injured, but he's not. He, he dodged one. And again, I know the trick. You know, that little trick he's doing right there. Yeah, well, he's, holding the, he's holding the side of the handles. And then he's going to go like crazy like... You know, like frog stance, and he's basically recoiling the his legs on his arms. Watch, yoink, yoink, and again, it's like, what's the point? For me, it's just what's the point, all right? All right, let's see if we got any more. Are we here? Let's flex the legs. All right, we get it. You got good legs, because you want to flex after. No, this is like, like I do a lot of this too. Um, I do a lot of flexing my quads and everything after each set, so I kind of so I can feel the activation and whatnot. So I like doing this. I like flexing. I like like act. I like activating and or doing poses after I train, just so I can get my body, you know, used to you know flexing and activating the quad or the muscle, whatever muscle I'm in. I like just basically activating the muscle after whatever muscle I'm targeting, and it makes it easier to activate number one to hit the pose. But then again, it gives you a little bit of practice while being tired and then holding a pose. So probably the best time to actually hit a pose is right when you're actually tired from doing a set. So, I mean, this is stuff's good to do and whatnot. And I'm not trying to like bash these guys. It might seem like it is, but I'm being harsh. But look, I gotta be harsh because number one, these guys are young bodybuilders. I'm not some, you know, um, bodybuilder who's got his, all these accolades and everything else like that. But I'm a definitely a smart ass fucking coach and trainer. And I'm a good bodybuilder and a great athlete. So when I say certain things, these guys are young guys. I'm trying to give, give some advice. They're young guys. None of what they're doing is necessary in order to be really good bodybuilders. Like the way they're training isn't necessary and definitely like, yeah, they're going to build muscle doing that. Of course, if you do a hundred reps, hopefully, you know, 6% of those reps are good, right? If you do a hundred of them, right? So if you're doing a hundred reps, you're, do, you're in here doing excessive stuff. Yes, for sure. You're guaranteed to break down some muscle and all that good stuff. We get it. But there's also a point where you're just kicking a dead horse. And you don't want to get in the habit of kicking a dead horse. So all I'm saying is you can do the same thing here. Do this exact same workout. If you want to make it freaking super hard, do four sets of absolutely everything, 15 to 20 reps, and do a one second negative and a one second positive. And that will be the hardest freaking workout you did in your life if you control it. Trust me on that. Here it is. One second negative. So it's going to be like, it's going to be 1,001, 1,002. So it's gonna be like that. One, two, three, four. That's what your reps gonna look like. When you're getting down to those reps, like 15 to 20 reps, and you get down to like 10, you're like, shit, I'm not gonna be able to do this. Don't lock your legs out. Don't do anything like that. Just take a rest pause, right? Rest 15 seconds, 10 breaths, 15 seconds, whatever it is. And then hammer out as many reps as you can so you get to the amount of reps that you're supposed to get, the 20 reps. Do that for all those exercises. Leg extensions, squats, leg press that's all they did do those three exercises literally four sets 15 to 20 reps each since doing 100 reps. i'm only doing i'm only saying because you're doing 100 reps and i should have did 25 so whatever 
I'm saying I'm only saying that because they, they did that many reps. So do four sets of 25 reps each, 20 to 25 reps, one like one second reps, like a metronome, right? And if you as soon as you start getting to the point where you can't consistently keep the tempo up or the same rhythm, pause, do a um, do a rest pause where you just take a couple, you know, take about 10, 15 breaths and then do as many reps as you can to finish the amount of reps and do that for every single movement and then rest for like one to two minutes. And let me, let's just push it a bit, all right? Because since they're longer sets, let's rest two minutes to, let's do two and a half minutes max rest. And let me know how that workout goes. Anyway, guys, if you liked the video, guys, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share. You know I'm going to come out that towel like it is transparent, vulnerable truth. For coachingjohnshee.com, book yourself a phone consult, 15 to 30 minutes at the end of the consult. If you want to go to coaching, I deduct a phone call off any package you pick. And get on this and get on it now because I will be raising my prices in the middle of January. So get on it right now. And that those who are already on who are signed up right now or are going to sign up before that date will have their already know that they will have their price grandfathered as long as stay around. Anyway, guys, make sure you guys hit those all those discount codes in the description below that help save or change your life for the better. Guarantee HLT supplements. Um, Greg just said .com for the ebook. Um, fit Army for Fit Army clothing. Let's get checked.com. Test all your levels, your hormone levels, vitamin levels, all that good stuff. And guys, add me on Instagram and TikTok. Add me. Send me your progress pics and your foodie pics and your training clips, and I'll repost it for you because you know how it is. Iron Jeffers Iron, because of overload your life. In the meantime, keep dreaming, Jason. Peace.